On this week's episode of The Home Show, we're going to continue in our theme of making ownership more affordable by talking about various down payment assistance programs. We're going to use the state of Texas, which is the place where we do most of our business, but these principles that we speak of are applicable nationwide. So without further ado, let's get into this week's show. Welcome to the home show where they teach generational wealth. They can get you good credit out the gate, real estate, no debate, they're here to help. They got attorneys, protect your family, they cover your needs. It's no gas, no gas, no gas. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to the new, the new, the new home show. What's up, Michaela? How you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. As I said in the intro, affordability is something that we're dealing with. Those folks that are looking to become a homeowner. And so we don't want to accentuate the negative. We want to give solutions and we got an excellent solution again this week. Let's talk about MCCs. <laughs> you gang? Work. Mm-hmm. Mortgage okay. credit certificates. There you go. Mortgage credit certificates. You know me, I'm always talking in mortgage So thank you for clearing that up. Why don't you give us a definition of what a mortgage credit certificate is, if you don't mind. Mortgage credit certificate is a tax credit. When it comes to taxes, you have deductions and then you have credits. A credit is more so what you want <laughs> because you're getting actual money back at the end of the year or in this case if you work it out you can get monies back each month but anyways this is a tax credit that's issued by an hfa or a housing finance agency or authority and it's a dollar for dollar tax credit to recipients to increase housing payment affordability with the mortgage interest that they would pay annually or over a year that's a mouthful okay <laughs> yeah no it is <laughs> they just make this stuff hard right they uh, do they just can't make it easy for simple folks like me so i appreciate you being here because we let you do the heavy lifting did you in your definition did you say how long the mcc has been around or no no but it's it was established by the Deficit Reduction Act, and mm -hmm. that came into place in 1984. So it's been around since 1984, right? Mm -hmm. I was here a couple of days before 84, but uh, mm -hmm. that's still a long time ago, okay? And mm -hmm. the reason I bring that up is these are things, uh, this in particular, this mortgage credit certificate is not something new. It's not a Johnny come lately. Mm -hmm. However, a lot of people, and maybe even you listening either via the podcast or watching the video podcast, this is the first time you may have heard of it, okay? Mm -hmm. So you might be thinking to yourself, okay, well, how is that gonna help? How is that gonna benefit me in my pursuit to make this home purchase more affordable here in 2023? From your standpoint, your opinion, why is this mortgage credit certificate a good thing for someone that is looking to buy in 2023? Well, for one, if you're lacking or struggling in with income or cash flow, mm -hmm. uh, this credit can help you qualify with your monthly income when applying for a home loan or a mortgage. And then secondly, like I said, at the end of the year, after you've paid your annual mortgage interest that you're going to pay, 20% is the number that or the MCC that they use, you can get that back in actual monies as a credit back to you to help you pay your tax bill at the end of the year if you have one, or say like you get $3,000 in as a credit back for mortgage interest and your bill is $2,000. You don't get the $1,000 back in your hand in money, but you can carry that over for the next three years in the future. If yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. And because of all those things, and you're correct, 100%, uh, 
why is that a good thing for someone that is looking to buy now as it pertains to affordability not qualifying for the home but mm -hmm. speak to the affordability piece as far as effective or nominal interest rates a nominal interest rate is basically the rate that you see if somebody's like you're gonna pay six percent interest on this car that's your nominal rate and then you have your effective rate which is affected by factors that you can't see in this case would be your mortgage credit certificate so since this is a credit back to you your effective rate is actually going to be lower than what they present to you as your nominal rate thank you for clarifying that that's how it helps with affordability as she just says effectively when you take what you can't see the effective rate because of the credit that one could receive in the form of this mortgage credit certificate if you qualify takes what you may see as a higher rate and effectively lower that rate but full disclosure like you said and i'm glad you went there what we're not saying is you're going to have a lower interest rate if you utilize this program but when you take into account the things that you can't see that interest that three thousand dollar example that you gave effectively compounded over years over a period of time mm -hmm. it takes that interest rate that you currently have and lowers it effectively so yes. that's how it's really helping folks and they really don't understand what say you on that point no that's big especially in a high rate environment you see, say you're they're presenting you with a seven percent interest rate okay yes that may be high now but if you a first time home buyer and you qualify for this program you may be able to lower that interest rate by one percent so now you're paying six and if you still feel like that's too high in a few years if interest rate interest rates do come down you can then refinance yeah we get on that a lot guys and we we want to educate we're educators here okay mm -hmm. uh, while we're hopefully buying those trust bucks from you so that when you are ready you give us an opportunity to work on the behalf of you and your family but with all that said th these concepts are huge and getting on the property ladder sooner rather than later is very very important and a lot of us are looking at the interest rates and you should i'm not saying mm -hmm. you shouldn't but just like with all things complex like becoming a homeowner there's nuance and i find michaela when people understand these things that might be the the nugget that they needed to get off of the fence mm -hmm. and get into the game because what have we seen over the last couple of years i mean what have people been waiting for housing prices to come down but they haven't <laughs> well why in your opinion why haven't they come down we don't have enough houses and there's a lot of people out here that are looking for housing not many houses so naturally prices are going to rise yeah and I, to me that's the largest factor just lack of supply right mm -hmm. not to count some of the other silent things that you don't see as far as competition and where that competition is from and how they're they are in a position institutional investors i don't want i, I hate when they say they institutional investors are folks that have cash okay yes. they're in better positions and if some of us don't move it's going to be a point to where you may not be able to buy and we yeah. don't want that here so because we're home ownership advocates if anybody has watched us over a period of time michaela you know i'm the people's champ it's not very lucrative being a people's champ but that's just no. that's that's <laughs> my assignment that's what i'm gonna stick to my assignment right mm -hmm. so all joking aside guys we really want you guys to utilize these tools and today we're talking about the mortgage credit certificate. Michaela, let's do this because I'm a visual learner and I was just thinking, hey, let's let's throw up an example uh, mm -hmm. because we're talking about nominal rate, effective rate. Nobody wants to hear that. Let's let's look at an example. How's that sound? It sounds good. <laughs> OK, OK. So now, again, we're talking about the Texas State Affordable Housing Corporation. That is a public website. We don't have any insider information, anything of that nature. We are an approved lender and we have done this program for years very mm -hmm. well versed and we do a good job in my humble opinion but on that website there is a calculator that will allow you to look at an example of what a mortgage credit certificate might do for you okay effectively 
So mm -hmm. as you can see on the screen, can you see that, McKenna? Yes, I can see it. Okay, give me a give me a loan amount. Shoot, go ahead and shoot. Whatever you say. Two hundred and fifty thousand. So two hundred and fifty thousand dollar loan amount. Now, before I go any further, just real quick, loan amounts and purchase price is two different things. So you want to make sure that you're looking at a loan amount because those are two different things. I digress. Interest rate. Give me an interest rate. What's T-Shack saying today for the 5% DPA? 7.875. Uh, uh, okay. So now, what's off the top, 7.875. <laughs> no, I ain't buying nothing, <laughs> right? That's what we say, right? Yes. But, but, <laughs> slow your roll. Let me show you what I mean by an effective rate, okay? Because nominally, nominally, that's the rate, okay? Not to be confused with APR. Let, let's go there since since I'm dropping acronyms. What's an annual percentage rate in layman's terms, young lady? It's your interest rate plus what you paid to get that interest rate. Perfect. The cost for you to get that money, mm -hmm. okay? The commodity is money. And how could somebody know, since I went there, just last bonus, how does somebody know if there's cost involved? If your interest rate and your APR aren't the same. There you go. So if your nominal yeah. rate, interest rate, right? And your mm -hmm. APR, annual percentage rate are different. Typically the mm -hmm. annual percentage rate is higher because mm -hmm. there's cost. Don't let anybody fool you. So now in this example, $250,000 loan amount, Interest rate today, 7.875% for a 5% down payment assistance. You can reach out for the nuance, but let's talk about the effective rate. 30 year amortization. The loan is spread out for 30 years. All these loans are fixed rate loans. Okay. So now let's submit. Now what you're seeing here, this calculator is giving us a 10,000 foot view. Okay. Let me decipher what it's saying years in intervals, one, five, 10, and 30. It says the MCC refunds 20% of the mortgage interest you pay every year when you file your income tax returns. Ask your lender how the program can help you buy your first home. That's what we're telling you today, right? <laughs> I couldn't yes. serve that up anymore. So now when you read the definition and gave us an understanding of where this tax credit came from, this is a government thing. Mm -hmm. And we talk about this all the time, Michaela, but why would the government come up with this tax credit in your opinion? They reward people for doing the things that they may not want to do and providing housing or shelter seems to be one of them <laughs> because they have many benefits or credits for when it comes to housing. That part, don't let that go over your head, guys. Yeah. The government benefits either people that provide housing or that own housing. Mm -hmm. That's another reason for you to get in the game if this is for you, okay? You always wanna do what the government benefits via the tax code. Mm -hmm. Love what you said. So now, here are the breakdowns in this example. Year one, you 20% of the total mortgage interest that you would pay. If you're at home, you wanna figure this out, you would take that $250,000, Multiply times 7.875%. You're going to get a number larger than $3,922. But you take 20% of that number. Now, let me say this. If you own a home, two ways on the taxes, Michaela, you're going to have a deduction that lessens your exposure to the tax rates. And then mm -hmm. you can have a credit. You get both here. So in this example, I believe... About 15 grand, first year, 15 grand at 7.875%. 20% of that is 39.22. So what mm -hmm. we're saying, the difference is that 11, $12,000 difference in the mortgage out of the total 15,000 mortgage interest that you're paying, mm -hmm. that 11, let's call it 11,000, 11, five, you can still use that to lessen your tax exposure. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. And then after you tuck, taking all your deductions, your children, your cousin and all them that you're claiming, mm -hmm. Let me stop playing. Uh, <laughs> all your legal deductions and you have the bottom number that the tax rate is going to be applied to. The, the computer or your CPA does his math, right? And it says, man, you owe $4,000 mm -hmm. to them people. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop clowning. Uh, <laughs> so what you would be able to do is 
take $3,922 from your MCC and pay the man. Yeah, I pause for effect. See, now, so that's a whole separate benefit. But now here's the last piece. Okay, let me see. You said 7.875%? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you take 7.875 and multiply times 0.8. Because you're effectively only paying 80% of that 7.875 interest rate. Make sense? Yes. Because in that first year, in this example, you get $3,922 as a credit. So your effective rate is 6.3%. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Now, just to recap, if in this example, okay, if in this example, they only had a $2,000 tax bill okay mm -hmm. do they get to use the whole three thousand nine hundred and twenty two dollars no so rough math that nineteen hundred and twenty two dollars that's left over that they couldn't use that year what could they do with it? it'll roll over into to the tax bucket for the following year and you could roll that over up to three years into the future every year yes right because mm -hmm. the government wants to benefit those people that either do what it doesn't want to do or can do what it can't do more efficiently. Mm -hmm. And that's provide housing, right? So you got to get into the game, okay? <laughs> so yeah. now, that's a, that's a great example. And I, I'll, I'll leave it there. What do you think? I think we explained it and then we gave an example and I think that helps because that helped me out. <laughs> Perfect. So when you see things like this, does this kind of information encourage you to not be afraid of higher interest rates? Oh, yeah, for sure. And then just when it comes to income, because, you know, stuff is high, like <laughs> everything is just everything is really expensive. And, you know, even though you work and stuff, it's like, yeah, you work, but gas is four dollars and a piece of bread is twenty. No, I'm just playing. But stuff is expensive. And I get discouraged because I'm like, man, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make enough money to buy a house. But with programs like this, not even focusing so much on the with the qualifying for the loan part, but just in the end, you know, kind of being rewarded or getting a benefit at the end of the year. It it I was already looking forward to home ownership, but this is just another benefit where it's like, oh, OK, yeah, home ownership is a, it's, it might be the thing to do. Yeah, yeah. So we keep it hope alive, right? <laughs> and, and we're not just making you feel good. We're actually showing you solution strategies that will encourage you, help you step off the ledge to get on the property ladder because it's very important, right? Mm -hmm. Homeowners, it's a proven fact, 40% more wealthier than renters. It just is what it is, right? And for all of you guys that are about to hit the comment section, Theoretically, you don't have to own a home, but here's the deal. Practically, most folks aren't going to invest, okay? And this is a de facto type savings account in that it provides utility, meaning you're gonna live in it. You're yeah. using it, right? You have tax benefits, appreciation benefits, hopefully if you've done it the right way, okay? And appreciation, the three, three the hard way, okay? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Did we hit everything, young lady? I think we did. We covered what an MCC is, mm -hmm. who issues it, mm -hmm. why it's important, mm -hmm. and how an MCC can be used. Perfect. Before we get out of here, guys, we want to talk about foundations. As a bonus, when we come back on the other side of this break, I want mm -hmm. you to categorize three or four things that you have done currently to get you prepared for home ownership, and then we're going to let the people go. That sound good? Yes, sir. We'll be right back. Are you tired of renting? Are you in need of more space? Are you ready to build a foundation for you and your family's legacy? Take the first step and schedule a home loan consultation today. We will discuss your home ownership goals and prepare a plan of action for you to start laying that foundation today. There it is, guys. It's about foundations. So with that, Michaela, what steps have you taken in your foundation that you're laying 
to prepare mm-hmm. you for home ownership? Well, as I spoke on last week, we've covered down payment assistance. I've done my research there, found a down payment assistance program that I believe I'm going to go with when I apply for a home loan to get my first house. So I'm going to say that's step one. Um, Step two, I have a budget that I don't like to look at, but I have to look at because it's important because buying a house, you need money. (laughs) And I'm not going to say you need a lot of it, but Depending on purchase prices, at least for me, I want to have at least six to eight percent saved. So I'm budgeting to which leads to my third point, saving up some money for when I plan on buying my house. And then lastly, I've had I've been listening when it comes to employers and careers, not wanting to do too much moving around before you buy a home because it can cause more documentation than what's already needed. So I've been employed in the same business. I've been with the same employer and my income has been increasing over the past few years. So those are just a few things that I've been doing. There you go. There you go. Are you doing anything professionally to increase your probability of making more money in the future? Yes, sir. I am. I'm in school to journey onto another career field (laughs) to increase my income so that's another thing as well got you and are you incurring any debt while you're in school no i'm not that's the recipe folks that's the recipe our time is up but we thank you for yours here's the deal if you fail to plan you plan to fail as the sponsor of the show said it's all about foundations okay build your house on a solid foundation and it'll last. Be good to one another. Let grace abound. McKay, until the next time. Peace. Peace. Y'all be blessed. Mm-hmm.